YouTubers, how are we people, all right? Um, as I promised you, I'm just putting together a bit of gear, uh, you know, in case we get caught out overnight in the Australian bush being what it is. Uh, we probably want, you know, something to eat, something to drink, definitely. Water is really important. Um, means of making a bit of a fire. I think they say, um, in order of importance, they say water is number one, shelter is number two, and fire is number three, and then food. They reckon you can go for a couple of weeks without food. I don't know, I'm lucky if I can go a couple of hours. But anyway, um, yeah, so what we're doing here is we bought a, um, just a, a backpack, you know, just from bloody Anaconda there or BCF, whatever it was. And um, it's only a light thing. We're just gonna put together a bit of a kit. I'll show you what I've got so far. And um, if you've got any ideas, let me know. It's just for overnight. It's not for spending two weeks out in the bush. I've got no tent, um, anything like that. I've got an improvised shelter. Um, as I say, it's just if you get caught out overnight or if the car doesn't start or something stupid like that. So let's start off with, I don't know, let's see what we've got in here first of all. Is um, cordage, some of this paracord or whatever. They're always going on, you know, you watch these shows on YouTube. They're always going on about cordage. Um, you know, great if you want to make a shelter or that sort of thing. So I thought, all right, I bought a, I don't know, I think that's about 10 metres or something of that para, paracord, whatever they call it. So, yeah, it should come in. Well, if you have a metre, it comes in handy, I suppose. This is my little fire starting kit, Judas. They reckon it's advisable to have two means of starting fire. This is one of them. Um, just in a little, one of those little resealable plastic bags, you know, with a little zip tie thing on it. A um, ferrocium rod, a ferro rod, whatever they call them. Little jar of Vaseline. And cotton wool balls. And the idea is that you dab the cotton wool balls in the Vaseline, and that's actually sort of flammable, and it, on a cotton wool ball, it holds a flame for like 30 seconds or 45 seconds. So that's probably enough time to um, get a small little bit of, you know, tinder going, a little bit of kindling going. And obviously you've got to start small and work your way up. So yeah, hopefully that's, you know, one good means of um, starting the fire. As I say, it's all pretty much waterproof, except for the cotton wool, of course. Um, so yeah, we'll just keep that in a little waterproof bag. So hopefully, you know, that'll get me out of trouble. Um, just in case another moon's a light and a fire, should work. I think I've tried this thing before and it doesn't. So what, oh there we go, look at that. Look. So yeah, so there's another moon's a start. A bit big, I might try and just get a small little cigarette lighter. Why carry around something so heavy? Um, if you're lucky enough to end up by a stream or near a water supply, that's uh, those um, water purification tablets. So as I said, John, you can never have too, especially in Australia, you can never have too much water, as much as you can carry. Um, as I said, don't, this is only an overnight thing. I don't want to be carrying 20 litres of water because that's 20 kilo and that's getting pretty heavy. So um, bear in mind you're carrying a gold detector and a pick and all the other stuff as well. So. We're trying to keep it small, but hopefully practical. Um, yeah, so yeah, some water purification tablets. What else we got? Um, just a little notepad. It's actually just those stick on bloody post-it notes, you know. Got given this somewhere, but um, yeah, just something to write on if you have to, and a couple of different pens. So you can leave a message, you know, uh, where you're going or which direction you're heading. But obviously, as they say, if you get caught in the bush and you get lost, stay where you are. Don't move. No one will find you. Um, this, I thought, could be really good for saving your sanity. It's just a, uh, a head net, just for mosquitoes and flies and that sort of thing. Um, if nothing else, it'll save your sanity because flies will drive you absolutely mad when they're around your face. I don't have a cattle on that put up with it, I really don't. But um, yeah, so that's just a thing you can put over your hat and uh, keep the bloody flies and stuff off you. Don't think I need to mention what you do with that. 
That is obviously tinder for getting a fire going. I can't think of any other use for a thing like that. Don't know what you'd use that for. So yeah, it's obviously tinder for starting fires. A little torch. Um, a couple of dollars at Woolworths, you know, just with a little battery. I mean, look, even if it only lasts you one night, for a couple of bucks, who cares? But it just gives you that little bit of light. Um, I know they say those ones that have got the head strap are better because that leaves your hands free. Um, but at the size of that, I suppose you could stick it in your mouth and hold it with your mouth, you know what I mean? Bear in mind, like I said, people, it's only for one night. A little, little bit of food. Um, all there is in there is just some nut bars, you know, that sort of thing, protein bars. Four little oxo cubes, like if you boil water and um, chuck them in and stir them up and that, uh, you know, it's like a little soup sort of thing, you know, it's not much, but it'll keep you on, a packet of chewy, just, you know, probably more for morale boosting than anything, keeping your mouth reasonably clean, I suppose. Um, yeah, so that's, that's that little bit of food, like I say. Um, just general stuff. A uh, little packet of Dettol. Uh, just to, you know, just to cleanse your hands and that, just to disinfect your hands or whatever. Um, I have got a proper first aid kit, I'll show you that. A couple of little syringe noodles, but good for picking out splinters, that kind of thing. Some fast insect uh, repellent, pain relief, because there is bites out there. Just a roll of PVC tape, they always seem to have tape with them, these guys. And some antiseptic wipes. I suppose they'd be good if, um, you know, you ran out of toilet paper, so, you know, they'd be, you know, good for that kind of thing, I suppose. Like I say, they weigh nothing, and, uh, you know, real easy to carry, so. I thought, yeah, they're worth the, you know, worth a few bloody lousy dollars that you pay for them. The tape might be good if you have to hold a splint together or something like that, you know. So that all sits in there, like so. I'm trying to keep all this as compact as possible, guys. As I say, I don't want to be carrying too much. When you're, when you're my weight, I'm already carrying enough as it is. I don't want to be adding to it. What else we got? Uh, just some more, uh, you know, those uh, zip tie plastic bags, just if you want to keep something dry. You could even put water in them if you had to, you know what I mean, like they're watertight. So um, if you found a bit of a supply, you can chuck water in them. Uh, that's about that section. The big bit we've got wet weather gear. So just a jacket, obviously highly fluorescent. Um, courtesy of Frankston Sand and Soil, actually. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, we have... This is the temporary... Just garbage bags, guys. Um, this is the temporary shelter I was talking about. Uh, you can put them over your head, you know, you can cut a hole in it and make like a poncho deal out of it. Or just cut a hole for your face, you know, all that kind of thing. There's three of them in there. Um, so they would keep your egg, stop the wind chill and keep you dry. Um, plus they're orange, so they're fairly, you know, they stick out pretty well, so people can see you from a distance. They help rescue, if that's the case. First aid kit. Um, pretty obvious reasons, you know, if you, anything happens to you, you need bandages or that sort of thing. Um, yeah, that'll do that, that's sealed. Just with these kits too, guys, just watch. They do go out of date. They've only, they do have an expiry date on them, and you'll find the items inside will have a, a date that says, you know, it might say, look, 2019 expiry or something. Just chuck, don't even sort it out, just chuck the whole kit and buy a new one. These things are so cheap. Um, the only problem with chucking them, of course, is that it ends up in landfill. So if you've got a better alternative, I don't know, it's a good plastic box for storage and that. Um, but the stuff inside, I don't know what you'd do with it, but... Um, once it's out of date, it's advisable not to use it. First aid administered wrong or incorrectly can probably be just as bloody lethal as what you're trying to protect against. Talking about protection, I shouldn't really say protection, but um, self-protection, yeah, maybe, I suppose, <laughs> um, is my Bear Grylls knife. 
Paid a lot of money for that, but that is a really nice knife. It's got the bloody sharpener, all that sort of stuff. It's got the got the um, whistle on it. It's got a ferrocium rod. It's even got some fancy little instructions in the back telling you how to keep yourself alive. So a good knife, I think, is always always handy. Um, there's a few reviews on these on YouTube. You know, it tells you about them and that. So always worthwhile having a good knife. Uh, a little bit more on safety, a thermo blanket. Just one of those foil blankets, they're a one use thing from what I've been told and understand if you try and refold them and repack them, it just doesn't happen. So for the couple of dollars that I paid for that, um, you know, you just throw up the bugger in and buy a new one if that was the case, but it only has to work once. Um, this isn't only for me, like if, if you're out in the bush and you come across someone who needs help, you know, you could sit there and help them and it's not just for me, it could be for someone else. So, you know, that's the whole idea of first aid. Speaking of first aid, more first aid, Australia being, as I said, what it is, full of bites and all sorts of things, snake bite kit. Now, I picked that up at a store and I looked and I thought, yeah, this is the job, this is no worries, you know, and um, did a little, little bit more research on uh, YouTube and uh, no, it's not even, it's, I don't reckon it's going to do the job well enough if it come to that. They recommend, as part of your, as part of your first aid procedure, uh, these are snake bite bandages. And these are properly designed for the treatment of it. As you know, you must immobilise the limb. There's none of this opening the cut and sucking the poison out. Or if you use a, a tourniquet, um, that's fine. That'll stop the blood. But the moment you release the tourniquet, uh, you get this rush of uh, toxins or poisons going up in you and probably kill you. And they reckon after about 10 or 15 minutes, the tourniquet will drive you mad. So that's no good. So the best means is immobilise the limb. Um, and that's most likely gonna be a hand or a foot or something like that. It's generally not, you know, your chest or anything like that though, so. But these are proper snake bandages. And what happens is, I won't unwrap them of course, um, on these is a, um, a pictogram, which means it's like a little picture. And what it is, it's a square. And as you pull the bandage tight, the moment that little picture forms a perfect square, that's the correct tension. As you can imagine, if you stretch that, the square will elongate and it won't look right. So the correct tension is when you get a perfect square. Um, as I say, too loose, you know, it's not gonna do anything and too tight, well, you might end up doing more damage. So they're proper snake bite bandages. They recommend two. Once again, a couple of dollars at Chemist Warehouse, cost nothing. So I don't even know if I'll bother with that one. Um, that might have a bit of a splint in it, which I'll, I'll salvage, but uh, I don't think that's gonna do exactly what we want. Um, Apparently it's got a little, uh, yeah, a little uh, uh, guide to what sort of different snakes, little pictures thing in there about the different snakes. But yeah, we might just open that up and, um, you know, keep the splint and get rid of the rest. Uh, having said that, as I said, water is the most important thing. So we got that one and we got that one. That's aluminium. Um, not real crazy about it. They didn't have a wide range, but um, you know, it's a good litre of water. And I suppose worst come to worst, you could, being aluminium, you could put it in the fire and boil it. I've actually got one of those little square mess kits coming, you know, the things that the, like the army guys use, so I've got one of them coming. Um, but I think most importantly, out in, the, out in the Australian bush, especially probably looking for gold, and I don't know, I'm not experienced and I could be wrong, um, it would be very easy to get lost because your mind's on finding gold, not on keeping track of where you park the car or that sort of thing. So unless you're really familiar with the area, um, what I have bought is a, Jeep, a handheld GPS unit. And that is a Garmin Xtrex 20X. Um, fantastic little thing. Not only can you program in latitudes and longitudes uh, of where people have found gold before, and this will direct you to it, you can also um, punch in the location of your car, the waypoint where your car is. And if you do get lost, you just punch in, uh, you know, return to waypoint, and this will automatically detect you or tell you, give you directions straight back to your car. Or you can program it to follow the path you came in on. So fantastic little thing. And great if, like I say, if you get lost, it'll t take you to the nearest town. I mean, if that's 20 kilometres away, you're in a bit of trouble, but um, 
you know, at least it gives you an idea of what direction you're going in. I think the batteries last for about 23 or 24 hours. If you have the backlight on, that cuts that in half, obviously. So you'd want to use it sort of sparingly. That's one other thing I will put in this kit is um, a couple of spare batteries for that. You know, they're only small, they don't weigh much, so that's probably worth having. Um, talking about first aid and personal location. I've also lashed out and bought one of these PLBs or personal locating beacon or an EPIRB or whatever they call them. So yeah, that's the unit there. Um, pull the antenna out and hit the red button there and that'll send out a signal and that uh, they will find you within three metres of that. So that's pretty good. They can almost pinpoint exactly where you are. Um, that wasn't that expensive really, a couple hundred bucks, but I think well worth it if you've got a, a busted leg or something like that. Um, you know, that's a big road that fell down a mine or anything like that be fantastic for helping you. Um, of course, it'll only work if you're conscious. Um, if you fall down and hit your head and you're unconscious, none of this stuff's gonna do you any good, is it? Because you can't bloody well use any of it. So you can only try and hope for the best. One last thing I got tubers was one of these um, signaling mirrors. You know, and you sort of look through the hole in the middle, you look through that, and you, I think you line that up with the plane or whatever you can see, and um, do that, and that'll flash a little flash of light, so um, yeah, I thought, you know, once again, a couple of dollars, all this stuff was only like, the only expensive items were obviously the GPS and the PLB. The rest of this stuff costs nothing. Um, I know it looks like a lot, but it's actually not that heavy. Oh, it will be a little heavier. Let me fill these up with water, obviously. Um, but you're gonna drink that probably as you go. Like, that's me sort of day one, you know, as you're walking around. You drink water out of that and that's your emergency one. I know it's not much, but it might be enough for 24 hours or overnight, you know, and if you're lucky enough, you might find a little stream. But yeah, that's that's all packs away into that, Tudors. Um, as I say, if you've got any, got any more ideas, let me know. As I say, I'm far from expert in any of this. I don't know what I'm doing with it, but um, I'm learning very, very quickly. So yeah, thanks guys. and. Um, yeah, as I say, there's a probably, oh, uh, that might be about it for this video, I think. I don't think I'll be putting much more in. Got a little bit more stuff to show you, and we're going to be heading off very, very shortly up into central Victoria. So watch out for a whole new range of videos, and hopefully um, we'll be getting some gold as well. Well, guys, that's it for part 19. Um, first thing I want to do is thank my new subscribers. We are up to six. Now, we're flying along with that here, so whoever that is, thank you very much. And thank you to all my subscribers. I'll try to keep these coming. Um, we shall see you very shortly in part 20. And, yeah, take care, tubers. We'll talk to you soon, guys.